Live from the Sands Convention Center, Las Vegas, Nevada. Extracting the signal from the noise, it's The Cube. Covering AWS reInvent 2015. Now your host, John Furrier and Brian Grazley. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are live here inside theCUBE at Amazon reInvent 2015. This is SiliconANGLE's theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier with Brian Gracie, who analyst at wikibon.com. We're here with CUBE alumni, Frank Artali, the legend, the myth, <laughs> is in our presence again. Managing director at Ignition Partners. Great VC firm, not the big name, good size fund, a quarter billion dollars roughly. Welcome back to theCUBE. Great to be here. Yeah, and we like to say we, uh, we punch above our weight. <laughs> so yeah, we don't, have the, we don't have the brand power, but we, uh, but we tend to do well. Well, you got a good yeah. configuration. I like the VC models, like got small teams, yeah. move fast, you don't jerk entrepreneurs around, you make some good bets, take some chances. Mm -hmm. um, but what are you investing in? You just closed a new fund. Give us the update on the new fund, what kind of investments you're looking at, obviously, yeah, data, yeah. drones, What's going on? Yeah, yeah, cool. So yeah, I, I love the drone space. I think I love to play with them a little bit more right now than invest in them. So we're, we're obviously like everyone else looking, looking at that. But in all seriousness, uh, so as you know, like as John, when we first met, we were investing out of Ignition Ventures 4 and we were investing in the infrastructure of, of big data and the infrastructure of the replatforming of, of enterprise IT. And in our last two funds, we've, we've continued to focus on that and really looking at all of the kind of things that an enterprise, again, being a business of all size, we really be trying to do in the future as they transitioned out of client server, on-premises, switch networking, to cloud computing, mobile first, big data, uh, and SaaS. And we're just continuing along those themes. And so in, in, in like five years ago, four years ago, it was really about the core infrastructure. And now we're looking at more things in the application space. Yeah. As an example, one of our investments out of our last fund uh, was Trifacta. And so if you think about the relationship between something like Microsoft Excel and Microsoft SQL Server, we view the relationship to something like Trifacta with the big data space. And we'll, you should expect us to see, you know, to see us do more things like that, that leverage the new infrastructure and enable cloud computing, enable mobile first, uh, and enable the use of big data. Some of our audience might know from the previous interviews that you've been on that you've been a big Microsoft person. You've been there, the original product manager for NT, um, and that's NT Server, and then obviously the monopoly of Microsoft was you know, taken down by the government. I but was there for that. <laughs> it was good competitive strategy, as yeah. I always say. You know, when you get broken up, that means you executed excellent competitive strategy. But Microsoft had a great franchise. That's the monolithic, that's the software model that you were referring to, client server. Now, Amazon feels like Microsoft. We were talking about in our opening, they're competing on a different value proposition, but they have a monopolistic flair to it. They got a storage box called Snowball that they're going to be shipping. Uh, they're in the shipping business, shipping at Amazon.com. Yeah. So I'm seeing this growth of this new company, Amazon Web Services, within the big monster, Amazon. Huge competitive strategy opportunity. How do companies compete with that? I mean, if you're out there, yeah. if you're Azure, certainly they got moves. What's right, your take right. on all this? So, you know, in a lot of ways, as I was sitting through the keynote today, and I was, um, I was trying to think of like an easy way to characterize it for people, because I knew I was going to be here speaking with you today. And the last couple of years, it's gone from people trying to understand what cloud computing is, and understanding then how early deployments can occur, and now there's just a lot more happening in, in, in terms of understanding the kinds of things that are, are barriers, right? So we moved from, when I was at Microsoft, and we were taking people from mainframe and mini to client server, there were all these barriers that need to be overcome. Like first, it was a new application programming model. We had to move from that. Then there were things like data security, data backup, Sounds familiar. compliance, <laughs> right? Configuration management, all of these things. And so like, if you look at the bulk of the keynote today, like even data import, how do you get data from IMS onto, onto SQL Server or, or onto uh, Oracle running on a Sunbox? So it was like, it was like eerie that, okay, 20 years come full circle and all the things that I used to go beg independent software vendors to build Right, was is what is what's being, is what's happening there. So I think in a lot of ways it's still kind of it's still kind of early days if you look at the the adoption cycle. But from a momentum perspective, the the independent software vendor uh, momentum perspective and the ecosystem perspective, you know, Amazon is a is is a force to be dealt with. And you know and I've seen them come an awful long way. Uh, of, of, of significance today was the announcement with with Accenture, which it's odd that that the uh, AWS reInvent keynote, the biggest announcement was a partnership announcement with an old line global SI. And so I think what you'll see is as sort of the, let's say people start choosing up sides right in the schoolyard on where the fight's going to be, 
uh, in a lot of ways you'll, you'll see that there'll still be a, a number of players uh, and customers still will want choice. Customers uh, on their own will say, you know, I have to avoid locking because that was what happened to me 30 years ago. And so as, you know, as long as that mentality still exists, there will be a place for, for uh, competitors that can provide dish, different, you know, different kinds of value. And so yeah. you can expect the folks at Microsoft to play from their strength. They'll say, you know, .NET applications are at least 50 to 60% enterprise apps. SQL Server Exchange, identity, what's the affinity between Azure and that? And then you know, AWS will play from a, uh, from a value of not only cost, but also certain enablements and being and, and you know delivering features features faster. So all of these clouds will will attempt to you know, to provide a different different set of values. I think the thing is we're still early days that that, that there's room uh, to see a lot of competition. And at the end of the day, you know, that's great for customers and also great for software vendors that are filling in the blanks as we you know, as we'll see in an, on, in an ongoing way. Yeah, so you spent some time at Microsoft, obviously. You've seen the platform play. You've seen what you can do with the platform play. How do you think about that as, a, as an investor when you're looking at, you know, Andy's making announcements, he'll go, yeah. well, a couple years ago we did this building block and then the next one. How far do you have to sort of think ahead to go, where are they going? And, and people show up and go, hey, we're looking for money. No, no, you're in that, you're right in that you're trajectory. You're in the tornado. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, <laughs> uh, in, so my job when I was at, uh, when I was at Microsoft, John, I was a product manager. We called it program management on Windows NT. And I always had the, I had the relationship with a lot of the ISVs. They would come and say, hey Frank, what would you like to see exist that you can help take to market? And, and what can you do to help me prepare so I can stay out of your way? And the advice I would always give them is, just imagine I'm a big bear, <laughs> right? And I'm running through the forest, right? And I'm just, I'm hungry, right? And so you got to avoid being damaged, right? So there's a couple of ways you can be damaged. One, right, you can get big enough that I suddenly believe you're food right, and I'm going to eat you. Or I could reverse field and just crush you because I, I didn't see you, your collateral damage. Or even worse sometimes, like you're trying to get my attention to show me something and I just ignore you. And so that's really the same. Don't th poke the bear, right, that's don't a lesson. Poke, yeah, don't <laughs> poke the bear, right? No, the bear can actually do some other things to you that I won't say because we're on live television. <laughs> but um, in, in, in essence, it, it really is up, for, it's up to those, the companies that come and pitch a business to us to explain to us that they really do understand whether it's Amazon or Microsoft or Google, whoever they're saying their primary partner is, they really understand the nature of that business and the relationships that they have you know, to, uh, around which they formulated their thesis why they've got that. And then on the, same, uh, uh, you know, on the other side of the coin, it's also up to me to maintain those relationships with folks like here at Amazon and, and, every, and everywhere else to really understand where things are going. But you know, that being said, when any business gets to be big enough, and yeah. cloud computing, it's a little bit different. Because if you look at any cloud computing vendor, like AWS was right here, they can actually see what a lot of their partners are running. And they say, oh, a lot of people like today, they might have said, a lot of people are running MariaDB. And so today is announced MariaDB support. So if I'm in the support business for MariaDB, maybe I'm not that happy about that today. But in general, the, you know, the, lo the longer you go. Cloud search uh, providers right. are also in the same boat yeah, too. Yeah, exactly. You got to start questioning what side of the street you want to be on yeah. when the music stops, you want to be not competitive. Yeah. So for me, like in our business, we tend to skate, we like to say we skate to a puck that isn't even on the ice yet. And so we're investing early, you know, early enough also to know if we see bigger players coming in too early, that we, coming in early, that we can actually do things to either pivot early or provide a strategic exit, uh, you know, and, or you know, other, other options for, you know, for the company. It's what yeah. we do for a living. So I got to ask yeah. you the question yeah. on pivoting, right? So obviously startup were a week that's been kind of, wasn't around when I was doing startups venture funding, but you, get, you realize you got to pivot, which means change course, essentially. You got some money in the bank, you got to pivot. That's one thing. And, and startups can do it very fast. So the question I have for you is, how do the whales pivot? Because, but it, the, the logic is on the cube we were talking this in the intro yeah. is, they still move slow, but they can still move faster than they were years ago. Yeah. So if you're HP, you're EMC, you're Oracle, they're buyers of your companies potentially. The M&A market is yeah, super hot right now. Yeah. They got to be looking at the freight train coming down with Amazon. They're like, they're also a bear, right? So yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. the fish coming, the salmon coming out of the water is the startups. So that's your deal, right? So what is that pitch to those guys? And what do they got to do? How are they pivoting? Yeah, and so if you, if you look at, um, if you look at like a, a larger company, a potential buyer of smaller companies today, one of the hardest things for those folks to do is actually hire people. Right, so in, in today's, today's climate, like if you're a hot software developer or a product manager, your tendency is to say, okay, I'm in the, the largest possible renaissance of enterprise computing, now's the time to take a risk 
and go to a, and go to a smaller company. So given an, uh, you know, an apples to apples comparison of say a job offer, unless someone has a real need for a very, very long term security, they'll probably go to a smaller company. And so part of the pitch when we're speaking to potential buyers you know, of our companies is that, let's we'll say look, you can go open 50 headcount and try to fill that and then do software development and using your, your traditional your product development strategies and two years from now you might have an MVP or if you're really, really interested in getting into the space, you know, we have, and we have a hot property, then that's a conversation we could have. And, uh, but at the same time, we are seeing some of the larger companies take a cue from the, from the smaller companies and starting with much smaller teams and being willing to fail fast and, uh, and make mistakes. So again, I come from the, yeah. the cathedral builders, right, like 20 years ago, where you set out on a three-year product plan and, and you shift your first beta, you know, 24 months out. You don't see the big guys even doing that today. They're all moving to a much more agile method, moving to, an, moving to an MVP kind of strategy, get something out, get customer feedback, and get on to the next thing. Well, and those guys not only have to be willing to say like, look, uh, your, your product is, is potentially going to augment my portfolio, replace our, but they got to be willing to say, look, I'm going to accept a different sales model, because if you're selling software, different than selling hardware. If you're selling it out of the cloud, it's on demand. I mean, th that's the other piece I don't think a lot of these big guys really have grasped yet. They, they, they kind of go, I love the technology, it looks great on a portfolio slide, but how, does, how do I sell it? Why, do, why is a customer going to want to engage with it this way? Right, and even, and even beyond that, there are bigger challenges for a lot of these bigger guys when they're taking a piece of technology in and turning it into a product, for many of them, that, things, that thing needs to be available, and again, in their current world, available on a worldwide basis, you know, in, you know, at, at, least eight, at least eight languages, right, on, on the day of release, Other, otherwise all of their channels of distribution, right. you know, get messed up. And so they, they do need to have a fundamentally different way of thinking to say, you know, can they, ask, can they answer the question, can I actually launch this US only or, or US languages only? So it is a bit of a gut-wrenching experience for them, but you see, you know, pockets of hope uh, you know, here, uh, you know, here and there. And I think they all know they need to evolve, or, like you said, become the dinosaurs that no one wants to believe that you know, that they are. Frank Artali inside the queue. I'll give you the final word to end the segment. Summarize the phenomenon that is AWS for the folks out there that aren't here. What's the big story here at this event? Yeah, and I think you know one of the you know one of the things at least that I saw in the keynote, as I was saying earlier, finally got to be in the front row of the keynote and see the slides for a change, is that the slope of the graph remains the same. So they're, uh, they're still growing, they're growing that big number year over year in the way that they said it, said it would without, you know, without flattening. So that's A, it's on the growth side, and B, just great support from their partners uh, and their large customers. Okay, Frank Garcelli in the queue. We'll be right back with more. Um, check out siliconangle.tv. Did you know we have podcasts up there now? Go to there, check out the podcasts. And we'll be at Dell World coming up as well as Oracle Open World, the Grace Hopper celebration, a women's celebration event. Check out theCUBE, we'll be back more with live coverage here at AWS reInvent after this short break.